Rolling? Yes, we are rolling. Hello everybody, welcome to another video. A video of a difference, a video of creation, a video of arts and crafts, some might say. Now look at this. Fuji GFX 50R, Nikon Z72 with a 2470F 2.8, some of the finest photography equipment available on the market today. I travel the length and breadth of the UK and take some amazing landscape images. Yeah, subjectively, fair enough. But what do I do with those images? Yes, they're in my videos and some of them will go into a book or a calendar, but most of them, most of them end up on a hard drive in Lightroom. Some get posted to social media, which, yeah. Um, so today's video really is all about what we can do with those images. So today we're gonna look at everything, well, frameless mounting, float mounting, uh, little ideas, small, you know, we're not going big. Today's all gonna be about small prints, how to make bargain cheap frames look like priceless masterpieces of fine arts. We're gonna do all of that. And I think with the run up to Christmas, this is just perfect timing for this video. So everything on this table is what I'm gonna be using today. We have a mat, just a simple cutting mat. We have a sharp blade. We also have a mat cutter because we are gonna be matting prints or in the UK, in the UK we say mounting our prints, but I believe in the US of A, it's matting. It's where you have a white Anyway, you'll see that. A ruler because we're going to be cutting mats, mounts, foam boards, that kind of thing. And of course we have a, uh, a cutter for cutting prints accurately. Now I may have the tools I need, but I have got zero supplies. So the first thing I'm going to do is go on a bit of a shopping spree. So here is the big bag of mounts slash mats that I got from my local framers. That's such a good idea. Go to your local framers and just see if they have any off cuts. Because think about it, when a framer creates a mount, they have a big piece of card, they have to cut a massive window out of it. What do you think happens to those windows? They all get chucked out. All right, so I've got myself this beautiful piece of textured white mount. And it's really important with this always to work on the back, not the front, the nice textured display side. We want that to remain clean. So the first piece that I'm gonna make is a micro print. So now I'm just measuring and marking my cutting lines for the tiny mounts, making sure that everything is evenly spaced. I'm making three templates here, but really two are just spares in case I mess up the cutting process. All right, so it looks a little bit liney, a bit complicated at the minute, but the X is the small window, the small frame that I'm gonna cut out of these tiny mounts. Now the way in which I'm gonna cut out these windows into my mat or mine, I keep calling it a mat. Is it a mat, is it a mount anyway? The way I'm gonna do that is by using this simple tool. There is a channel on the edge of this ruler which my mat cutter clips into like a rail and then that will slide up and down the rail like so, giving me a nice straight edge. Now the blade on this cutter is angled at 45 degrees, which gives me a beveled edge. The problem with this tool is when you start cutting, you can't actually see the lines that you've marked on your card. So I like to mark where the blade is on the cutter and then mark the ruler where the lines begin and end. That way you know exactly when to stop pushing on the cutting tool and thus you don't overcut your mount. And there we have it. So that is one beautifully cut 45 degree window, tiny window. Now all I've got to do is cut the, uh, the straight lines and we'll have ourselves a tiny mount. Okay, so never thought I'd be so excited about such a tiny mat. But for now, we need a print to go in this. So I don't think we should understate the importance of the image that's gonna go into this mat. We don't want a typical landscape shot, which is intricate and detailed. Instead, we want something that's gonna work well as a thumbnail, because essentially, that's what it is. And what works well as thumbnails tend to be graphical images. Image with bold graphical shapes that are instantly identifiable. Ooh. With the prep now done for the micro prints, it's time to move on to the next super cool DIY 
display thing for your own prints. Mm. This is a cheap, nasty frame. It cost, I think it cost a whopping three pounds from Wilkinson's. And I am gonna make this look like a fine art masterpiece. So, is that glad? Hang on. I Okay, no, I thought it was glass. It's not glass, it's Perspex. Uh, but that's okay, as long as you don't scratch it. That's the problem with Perspex is it scratches really easily. So the way in which I'm gonna make this cheap three pound frame look like a masterpiece is, well, it's all in the mount or the mat. You see, usually or typically you would get a mat and you would cut a hole in the middle and it would have an equal border all the way around. And that's so common. How can I make this look like a bespoke piece? Obviously, it's about the image, that's incredibly important, but it's about how you present that image in the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my image lots and lots of negative space. So I think something as simple as creating a custom mount and giving thought to the space and presentation of the image can make all the difference and even the cheapest frame can look top quality. Of course, we need to choose a suitable image for that mount. All right, so that's the easy work out of the way now. We are going on to the most challenging part of this video, which is creating a perfect frameless print. Oy, so on my shopping spree before I picked up this. This is foam board, but it's self-adhesive foam board. Now this should be quite simple, quite straightforward, right? Print off a nice image, stick it to the foam board. Job is a good one. I've got a feeling it's gonna be a bit more difficult than that. So you can, uh, you can buy this stuff online, you get it from Amazon. I bought mine from Hobbycraft, but here's the problem. This is A1 and I'm not printing A1. Um, ideally, I would like to buy this in pre-cut sheets that match my photographs. The worry I have is that I've got to cut this myself. And because there's no mount to hide it, there's no, you know, there's no frame, there's, there's nothing. It's a frameless print, which means everything is going to be on show. So. It's got to be absolutely perfect. All right, so we have our eight by eight piece. And what I need to do now is prep it for the print, the print which is going to lay on top of it. So all I'm going to do is score this top piece nice and easy, a little score. The scoring of that paperback allows me to peel it off in two parts, which helps so much when applying my print to the self-adhesive foam board. Look who has decided to join us. Oh, Monty, you gonna say hello? Oh God, you can't help but feel sorry for him in that cone. He's had, the, he's had a, few, uh, a few fatty lumps removed, so. Um, make sure it doesn't chew his stitches. But anyway, we are now gonna print our images. So what I've done is basically I've created an A3 template in Photoshop and I've dragged my images at actual size into which they're going into those various frames and mounts and whatnot. Now I appreciate that not everybody has their own printer, but by doing it this way, by creating lots of small images on one template, it works out great value for me. So I've looked at my local lab, which is Digital Lab, and you can get an A3 size, so one A3 size print for five pounds 92 plus VAT. I think that's not bad if you've got like four, five or six smaller images on one piece of paper, which is kind of what we're doing here. And then you just cut them out, so perfect. So I am going for a platinum burrito paper. It could be burrito, I'm never too sure. Burrito, potato, potato, but it's got a lovely sort of semi-gloss lustered finish. And what this does is it gives you very deep blacks and fantastic contrast and saturation with rich, vivid colors. So, you know, it's not a semi-gloss. You can't go wrong with a semi-gloss.
So there we have it. This is the first product, the first print. This is perfect for a desktop or a sideboard or just to give a gift to somebody. And I was going to make a stand for the back of this, but whilst out and about on my shopping spree in the works, I saw these little easels and I thought that is just too perfect. So now we move on to the cheap three pound frame from Wilkinson's, which is about four US dollars. Give it a good clean. Now you can see where I've placed the window. I've given three times the amount of space to the bottom as I have to the top. So I'm giving so much importance to this window. And I chose this photograph specifically for the frame because this is a high contrast black and white image. Actually it's infrared and it's really striking, really bold. And I think when all this comes together, it's gonna look fantastic, but even more so because I'm gonna emboss it. So as a, a landscape photographer, obviously um, I sell my prints. So I thought it was a good investment to buy an embosser. You can get these on Amazon, you can get them on eBay, and they essentially give you the size of these plates here, and then you can put in anything you want. This one says Thomas Heaton, limited edition, very fancy. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna emboss the bottom of this mount. Now, typically these are designed for embossing lightweight photographic paper and not thick card, but this is a slightly beefier embosser, so if I give it a good squeeze, it just about does the job. Now we're gonna pop this beautiful infrared image onto the back of this mount, and then once it's in the frame, probably add a signature for that extra value, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that three pound Wilkinson's frame is going to be transformed. So for signing anything that'll take a pencil, this is my preferred pencil of choice, a Rotring 600. And the great thing about this is not only has it got a beautiful weight to it, but it never needs sharpening because the, uh, the lead is a bit like a, a clicky system. Just click it and the lead comes out at the end. So it gives a consistent, smooth signature uh, which I, you know, I, I find that writing with this is, um, yeah, it's a pleasure. A bit, bit geeky there on the old pencil. <laughs> you could just use a, uh, yeah, if you wanted to, just use one of these born to shoot. <laughs> to do now is the most challenging and that is to make a frameless print. Now I've already cut out my foam board, my self-adhesive foam board and prepped it and I have a print which I'm hoping is a millimeter for millimeter perfect fit. If not we're gonna have to do some trimming but that's okay. I'll give it a good going over simply because we don't want any dirt on the back of our print because That'll just, you'll just be able to see it basically. It'll show as bubbles or imperfections in the surface. And we are going for absolute perfection. Now this actually is easier with a bigger print and you'll see why in a minute. Um, but we have this guy. <laughs> this is the uh, Hammy the Hamster, who is a one of those, uh, one of those heating devices you put in the microwave. It's like a hot water bottle. But yeah. Anyway, what's great about these is essentially it's a bean bag. You want to, once you've got your print, lined up and in position just like so we want to place the hamster down and keep it there so this adds weight to the print but because it's a soft bean bag it doesn't damage the print now i look at little hammy the hamster there doing his job perfectly now ideally i would like a pair of gloves for this job but i couldn't find any so instead i'm using a lens cloth to make sure i smooth the print onto the adhesive leaving no air bubbles behind So as I just mentioned in the voiceover there, it would have been much better if I had gloves, but for the life of me, I just couldn't find my uh, little cotton gloves anywhere. But that is not bad. It's not perfect. And this foam board also is probably not the best. I'm not sure if it's the way I've cut it or what, but I tell you what, it's not bad. A beautiful frameless print, which would have been so much easier if not only it was bigger, so we had a bit more flexibility, but also we had a uh, foam board that was already pre-cut to size. But now we have this frameless print. That's right, we're gonna frame it. 
So before we move on to the final piece, the grand finale, the piece which I think is going to trump the other two pieces, maybe, I don't know, it's quite impressive. Let me thank the sponsor of today's video, which is MPB. Now, when MPB reached out to sponsor this channel, it was pretty much an easy reply from me. It was like, yes, absolutely. MPB is a place where you can go and buy, sell, and trade your gear. So for me personally, when I moved over from my Canon 5D Mark IV to my Fujifilm GFX, I used MPB to sell my gear. They bought it off me. They bought my Canon 5D Mark IV, they bought my L-series lenses, they even bought some cheaper prime lenses, and they bought my Zeiss Distagon. Now it was so simple, I went on the website, input my gear, itemized gear, told them what condition it was in, and then they sent a courier and collected it. And then, get this, this is the best bit, they emailed me once they got the gear, and they said, Tom, we actually think this is worth more than what we initially quoted you. So if you're looking at upgrading your photography gear, or you want to buy some photography gear, or you want to trade some photography gear, then without a doubt, I would recommend MPB, zero faff, and you'll get a fair price for your gear as well. So there's a link in the description, check that out. But for now, we are moving on <laughs> to the grand finale of homemade craft art for your landscape photographs. This is a frame I picked up in, another Wilkinson's frame, but this is a box frame. I think this would look very cool if we could make it appear as if it was floating inside of this frame. This is a little scrappy piece of canvas which actually came off the easel which is now holding my uh, very cool micro print. So all I'm going to do is use a bit of double sided sticky tape, stick this in the middle of my mount or my mat and then place this on top and then, et voila, we have a floating image. So for the record, I'm just eyeballing this consistency. And that'll do me. So there we go, I don't think that's a bad way to spend a couple of hours and it, honestly I can't emphasise this enough, even if it's just something tiny like this, uh, just printing your work but not only printing it then displaying it somehow, that's what it's about, don't let it get lo lost in a drawer and god forbid, even worse, don't let it just sit on a hard drive or be lost in the ether of social media, get it displayed, and hopefully this gives you an idea, it's just a bit of fun, nice and affordable. I know that my family's Christmas presents, although we're only in September, are well and truly sorted, eh? My wife's gonna love this, so there, there we go. Who needs diamond earrings? No one, just one of these prints.